salvation, and happiness. It's your season. It's your time. God has plans for your life to prosper you and to give you hope and a future. Join us and learn how God's love and power can bring hope and happiness to your life. This is your opportunity for motivation, encouragement, and purpose. Welcome, church family. I'm Renee Johnson with the Daily Gospel Network, where we bring you the Lord's Word every day from some of the country's most inspiring churches and pastors. And today is no different. Let's check out one of the newest members of the Daily Gospel Network. Hey, God bless you and welcome to the One Touch Ministry broadcast right here on the Daily Gospel Network. I'm Pastor Shannon Young and this is Prophetess Niditra Young. So greet the people, my fair lady. <laughs> God bless <laughs> God bless everyone. Thank you so much. I praise God for you. I'm so glad that we're able to be in your home today. What a wonderful Friday it is. Yes, it is a wonderful Friday. <laughs> and we want to thank the Daily Gospel yes. Network for Woo-hoo. allowing us to be able to come on every single Friday Amen. at 1.30 p.m. Yes. to be able to come into your homes and bless you guys. And so we just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you to the Daily Gospel Network. Yes, thank you. And today we want to dedicate our um, message on today or or our show on today to Minister Mark Jackson. He recently just passed away and Mark Jackson was was the music producer for the journey for your journey project yes he mark um elder mark he yes. literally was a great inspiration to rest on me lord yes. um my uh my desire yes. uh, all the songs that are on our uh cd he was such a blessing and inspiration and he taught us so much yes. about music sound how to produce how to hear your and, and correct you know, and I praise God for him, and I, he will be missed. Yes, he will. And so we just want to take this time, dedicate this moment yes. to him. And I want you to get ready to listen to an awesome, tremendous word yes. from Prophetess <laughs> Niditra Young. All right. So <laughs> tune in to this really quick. We're going to be right back right after this. Amen. We want to share with you yeah. and your family. Jesus Christ. So tune in, tune in, and we will grow together to increase our faith with God with one touch in our streets. We're touching hearts and changing lives. everybody god bless you thank you so much for joining me i am prophetess niditra young and i'm telling you i am so super excited about what god is about to do for you i'm telling you god is about to give you a breakthrough today and it's going to bless your entire life yes a breakthrough that's going to bless your entire life because a lot of times we don't think that god uh hears us and a lot of times we think god has forgotten about us but today somebody call somebody else and say today god is giving me a breakthrough and i'm super excited excited about it oh glory to god before we go any further let's go to the throne of grace and be able to pray and ask god for us to be able to hear what he has to say today father we thank you we give you praise we give you glory and we give you honor god we thank you for all that you have done and all that you're getting ready to do god we ask you to hallelujah Take us, God. Take us through the battle. Take us through the war, God. And and, and allow us to win. Hallelujah. Allow us to go through the battles and the trials of tribulations of life, God. And come out on top. God, we thank you for breakthrough today. God, we thank you for uh, 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 taking us through. Hallelujah. God, we thank you for just cleaning us up, God, and making ways out of no way for us. God, we just give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. God, we thank you for healing our minds. We thank you for healing our bodies. God, we thank you for being the one, hallelujah, that opens up everything. 
every door. Hallelujah. And God, we even thank you for the doors that you have closed because that means brand new things are about to happen. Breakthrough is coming to us today. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Oh, glory to God. Listen, I am excited because I know breakthrough is coming. Breakthrough is coming. But in the meantime, ooh, glory to God. While we're sitting back waiting, in the meantime, while we're sitting back waiting for God to give us a breakthrough, there's some things that we must do. There's some things that we must mature, uh, 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 mature in. There's some things that we must do to get ready and get right and get in line. Hallelujah. Because I don't know about you, but I know already that I am next in line for my miracle. Hallelujah. I am next in line. And I know that you're next in line for the miracle that God has for you today. Listen, I, 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 I have to tell you that this message right here is definitely going to be a two-part message. And this two-part message is going to take you to the next level in life. It's a lot of development. It's a lot of leadership development. My husband and I, our ministry is based upon leadership development in the kingdom. And the reason why we do a lot of leadership development, because a lot of times we as leaders, my God from Zion, we need help. And a lot of times as leaders, because we are leading people, we don't like to ask for help and we don't like to say I'm sorry or we don't like to say I need help or I need somebody to guide me and God has pressed upon our heart to make sure that we are the one of the ones that help the kingdom leaders hallelujah and help the people of God help lead people properly because there's no need for us to leave and we're still broken it's no need for us to lead and we're not healed yet oh glory to God I'm catching something now oh glory to God, I feel my help coming on. It's no need for us to lead and we have not matured. Woo! Glory to God. I don't know about you, but it's time for us to mature. It is time for us to mature in the kingdom. It is time for us to mature as believers. It's no need to say I've been saved for 20 years and I'm still struggling with the same mess that I was struggling with when I first came into Christ. Woo, glory to God. I, I, I feel something right there. It's no need to continue to keep struggling. It comes a time when you have to grow up. My God, as children, as a mother, mm, glory to God, I, I, I had the privilege of carrying a baby, my God from Zion, and, and, and when she was born, born. I, I, I began to rock her and I began to kiss on her and I began to tell her how much I love her and I was so excited to be a brand new mother. I, 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 as a mother, I was so excited. There was a joy that came over me. Glory to God. There was something in the atmosphere. Oh, glory to God. I, I, I no longer thought, my God, like a young girl. I thought as a mother would think. I, I, I got to the point in my life, glory to God, hallelujah, where I, I felt myself growing up. I, I start feeling a little bit more mature. Oh, glory to God. I'm going to have to calm down because I got it. I have to tell you the topic today. Mm. Oh, glory to God. The topic that God gave me today is with maturity comes the desire to serve. Uh, with maturity, who glory to God, comes the desire to serve. Uh, and and, and I, I'm going into the story of being a mother because even though I knew my baby would grow up, I still looked at her as my baby. And, and and I would often tell her when she got a little bit older, oh, baby, you're going to always be my baby. <laughs> and she would say, yes, mommy, I'm going to always be your baby. <laughs> but as time went on, she became a teenager. And I still tell her, my goodness, you're going to always be my baby. And she gives me this look like, Mom, I know. It doesn't matter how old I get. <laughs> I'm going to always be your baby. 
<laughs> but let me tell you something about God. God wants us to learn how to mature. You know, I know when we come into the kingdom as uh, children, babes in Christ, there's a lot of things we don't know. There's a lot of things that we're not quite aware of. So this is why we call the you babes in Christ. Meaning you're just stepping into the kingdom. But now 20 years has passed. <laughs> I said 20 years has passed. And now you are still struggling with the same things that you were struggling with when you first came into the kingdom. That's a problem. You say, oh, well, that's not fair. You're judging. No, I'm not judging you. I am correcting you. I'm letting you know that that's a problem because if you've been on a journey for 20 years and you have not learned anything, my question is, what are you doing? <laughs> okay, so... The first question that I want to, to lay out for you, the first thing I want to lay out for you, that Christians, the maturity in Christians requires excellence. It requires us to become excellent. It requires us to master. It requires us to prioritize. It requires us to see things on different levels. I'm going to talk to you about blameless. Blameless does not mean faultless. See, a lot of times when you say, oh, I'm blameless. I didn't do anything. Doesn't mean that you didn't have a part to play in it. So it doesn't mean that you're faultless. So being a Christian and being, being a, a mature Christian requires excellence. So some of the things that I'm going to speak to you about, I'm going to give you examples of excellence. I'm going to give you examples on how to become more of an excellent, mature Christian. Huh, glory to God. So blameless, once again, that's one of them. Blameless does not mean faultless. God's, God's leaders, God's leaders are all human. We're all human. So that means as humans, we're going to make mistakes. And, 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 and not only with mistakes, sometimes we are going to sin. Glory to God. But let me tell you one of the keys to actually becoming more blameless is when you make mistakes or if you sin my god you have to learn how to go back to god and ask for forgiveness so the word repentance plays a huge part in becoming mature and excellence mature as a Christian, you have to learn how to go back to God and repent and ask God to clean you up. You have to work on correcting your life. You got to work on correcting who you are. Because see, as Christians and as we're maturing and as we're becoming excellent and working to be excellent in this, we must learn how to go to God and say, God, forgive me for I have sinned. That's it. Forgive me for I have sinned. Now, once you begin to ask God for forgiveness and you begin to repent, your job is not to continue to do it again. Sometimes we take advantage of the word repentance. And I'm going to stay right there for just a second because we take advantage of, as people of God, even leaders, leaders, believers, children of God, we take advantage of the word repentance. We cannot take advantage of that word 
Just because today is Friday and you said, Father, forgive me for I have sinned. Forgive me for, and you begin to call out your sin and say, God, forgive me for that sin. Does not give you the right tomorrow, which is Saturday, to go out and do that sin again. That's abusing the word repentance. When you are asking God for repentance, that means you have acknowledged that it is wrong. You have acknowledged that you've made a mistake. You have acknowledged that you stepped out of line. And you have acknowledged that you're not willing to do it again. That's what repentance is all about. Not being in the position to constantly, constantly, constantly repeat the same thing over and over again. So this is why maturity is needed. You need to mature in your faith. Mature in your walk. Mature as an individual. Mature. That's what God is calling for. <laughs> Glory to God. Husbands of one wife. I said husbands of one wife. That's right. When you are a Christian, maturity is a requirement. And walking in excellence is a requirement. So when you are a man of God, you should only have one wife. One wife. A leader's marriage must honor God and be in divine, and I mean divine, divine connection. It must be in divine order. You cannot marry this woman and then go fool around with another woman. It does not work because God called you to marry one woman, not marry two. This is all about maturing and becoming excellent in God. Christians, we must learn how to mature in excellence. This is some of the steps. When God blesses you with one wife, you treat her right, you love her, you respect her, and stay married to that one woman. Work with her. If she doesn't know things, teach her. If she doesn't know how to love, show her. This is what God is asking for from the mature Christians. Glory to God. Mm. Glory to God. I feel this thing. God is calling for the, ch uh, the, the, the Christians, the mature Christians, to become vigilant. Now, the word vigilant, glory to God, the word vigilant means to keep watch or to stay awake. God is calling for the children of God. He's calling for us, us Christians, us mature Christians, to become vigilant in this hour. It is time for us to become vigilant because we are so quick to, 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 uh, to become focused on other things that we don't understand that God wants us to be watchful. He wants, to keep, he wants us to keep our eyes open. He wants us to make sure that we're watching. Stay awake. Don't be closed-minded. Stay awake. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Leaders must be watchful. Must be watchful. Be aware of what's going on. In your own. Glory to God. <laughs> be watchful and be, be aware of what's going on in your own lives. And the people of God that he has asked you to lead. Does not mean to be a busybody. But if you see problems, that's your time as a leader to say, you know what? I see a problem here. Let me begin to pray. I didn't say be a busybody. Be watchful and, 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 and careful and watch your own life. And then watch the people's lives that you're pastoring, that you're leading. 
And when you see things, begin to pray. Begin to ask God for strategy. Begin to ask God for direction. Ask God to show you. Say, God, show me what to do. God, show me how to pray. God, give me the right words to, to work with that person. Come on now. These are the things that God is calling for from a mature, mature church. Glory to God. God is calling for you to have good behavior. Leaders must consistently demonstrate, my God, good behavior. Good behavior, meaning living in such a way so that it won't bring reproach upon the name of Jesus. We can't live however we want to live. We cannot do what we want to do. Because if we don't produce good behavior, people are watching us. Leaders, people are watching you. Children of God, Christians, believers, people are watching you. I'm telling you, mothers, mothers of the church, pastors, evangelists, apostles and pastors, God is asking you, to make sure you have good behavior. Make sure your lifestyle is lining up with what you're preaching. It's no need to preach on Sunday and live like hell come Monday. God is calling for us. He is calling for us to have good behavior. Blessings and curses can't come out of the same mouth. We can't say I love you today and curse somebody tomorrow. How you live can bring reproach, not just upon you, but, but, but it can also bring a reproach upon God. We want to win souls, not tear souls down. We want to bring people to the church house. Then live right. Hmm. God is calling for a mature, my God, a mature Christian Ooh, to walk in excellence. My God, ha, oh God, hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is also appointing people to be faithful. Faithful leaders are busy leading the lost and sharing with them the treasures of God's word. When you're faithful to the call, when you're faithful to the vision, that means you have to become more active in the kingdom of God. Become active. Become active. Start, start, start evangelizing. Uh, 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 knocking on people's doors. God is calling for you to be faithful to the call. He wants you to become busy. Become more busy in the kingdom. It's important that you do so. Be stay focused. Whatever vision God is giving you to give out to your community, then do it. Whatever vision that God has given for you to write down, write it down and begin to work it. God is calling for a mature, who, a mature Christian to walk in excellence. And I'm going to stop right here. This last point. Not given any type of wine. <laughs> Meaning, leaders must be consistently aware of their influence. If you know that your sister or your brother is struggling in this area, then you should not do things that's going to influence them or it's going to push them to stay in that rut or to return back to that issue. For an example, if you're the type of person that drinks wine and you know you have a sister or a brother that just got delivered from drinking alcohol because they did it too much so they became an alcoholic 
Your job is not to drink around your sister or your brother because it can cause them to fall back in to their sins. So be careful on the influence. Be careful. You need to be witnessing the Lord to them. You need to be encouraging them while they're in their struggles. You need to be pouring into them, reminding them that the answer is not in the bottle, but the answer is in Jesus Christ. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. I'm going to stop right there. I want you to come back and make sure you pick up part two in two weeks. Because let me tell you something. God is calling for a mature Christian to walk in excellence. Are you willing to be that person that's willing to be mature enough to walk in excellence with God? Are you the one that God has called to speak the truth? I know for myself, God has called me to speak the truth. And a lot of times, people don't like the truth. But God said, I need you to speak it. In, in, in 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, verses 1, I'm going to read from verse, verses 1 to 5, quickly. I solemnly urge you in the presence of God in Christ Jesus, who will someday judge the living and the dead, when he comes to set up his kingdom. Verse 2, it says, preach the word of God. Be prepared whether the time is favorable or not. Continue to keep preaching the word of God. Continue to be the truth teller. Continue to be God's mouthpiece. Glory to God. Ooh, patiently correct and rebuke and encourage your people with good teaching. For a time is coming when people will not be willing to no longer listen to the sound of wholesome teaching. They will follow their own desires and will look for teachers who will tell them whether, whatever, their itching ears want to hear. They will reject the truth and chase after methods. But you shall keep a clear mind in every situation. Don't be afraid of suffering for the Lord. Work at telling others the good news and fully carry out the, the ministry God has given you. I like that last part. It says, and fully carry out the ministry God has given you. I want you to fully carry out what God has told you to do. Whatever the vision may be, fully carry it out. In Jesus' name. Amen. For more information on today's Spotlight Church, visit them on the internet and follow them on social media. I'm Renee Johnson with the Daily Gospel Network. And until next time, remember, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us.